Hello everyone. So in this video, I'll be continuing uh, my talk about uh, multiple linear regression, and in this video, I'll be talking about multi-collinearity. So collinearity is nothing but uh, it is uh, a redundant term uh, which kind of influences the model and inflates the coefficient or parameter estimates that we make. And sometimes it can also make it difficult to estimate the correct value of these coefficients. So the way we identify if a variable is uh, inflating uh, the coefficient parameters or not is to through something called variance inflation factor. It is a number which uh, quantifies the inflation that is seen due to collinearity. So basically, uh, VIF is uh, found by this formula. But however, the R square here is. Uh, the way it's found is uh, slightly different. So when we are doing multiple linear regression, you have a Y response and then you have, uh, for example, let's say you have three variables and then uh, we do multiple linear regression with these three variables or with their interactions. But in order to identify with the R square, the uh, R square value is actually found by uh, choosing one of these variables as a response and uh, trying to fit uh, using the other two values or other two variables are their predictors and when you do this you get an r square and with that particular r square you use this formula to get the vif similarly you repeat this for each of the variables so that's how you get these uh, uh, the vif numbers and vif of one means there is no collinearity usually uh, it can be that um, when your r square is less than 0 0.9 then your vif might be one but uh, and if it is 0.9 or greater, it can be 10. And when it is 0.99, it can be 100. Usually, when the VIF is between 5 and 10 or higher, that means collinearity could be a problem. The way to solve these, the, the problem of uh, collinearity is by using VIF to, uh, and then uh, removing the redundant term from the model and uh, checking if this reduces collinearity. So let me move to jump now where I have this, uh, I'm using the same data of thickness versus uh, the five other variables that I've been using in my previous videos. Except this time I created a new uh, variable just for the sake of demonstration. So let me uh, first right click and show the formula as to how I created this. So if you see here, um, uh, this uh, val factor variable is actually a function of uh, other variables uh, in in this data set so it's product of react 1 and react 2 divided by time square so you can kind of see that this variable is dependent on uh, other three variables in this data set so this kind of uh, uh, results in inflating the uh, the coefficients that are estimated so let's do the multiple linear regression fit and uh, let's take a look at the VIF values. So I'm opening fit model, adding uh, thickness as the Y response and adding all the uh, variables as uh, my uh, uh, construct model effects. And here I'm not considering any uh, interactions at the moment. Uh, and then uh, you can see that uh, jump has done the fitting and uh, now, now uh, let's uh, come to the parameter estimates table to in order to take a look at the VIF values you right click on the table and then go to columns uh, oh, uh, I think uh, yes and then say VIF so now uh, you can see that for react 1 the VIF is 44 which is high uh, if you set a cutoff of 10 then you can see that for react 1 it's 44 react 2 it's 722 for time it's 88 and the other three are one which is good and the val factor so it has a vif of 1021 which is very high so since the vif for val factor is very high let's try removing it from the models you can also see that the p value for val factor is very uh, high uh, it's greater than 0 0.05 so it kind of tells that this is insignificant so let's remove this now let's take a look at the uh, uh, the VIF factors again again uh, so every time you remove a variable the VIF column will disappear so you in order to make it reappear you right click and uh, go to columns and then say VIF so now you can see that uh, almost all the VIFs are uh, between uh, 1 and 1.5 or 1 and 2 
so which is good so this is how uh, you can uh, check for multi collinearity when you are using uh, multiple predictors for uh, fitting a response using multiple linear regression